how true that song is. No matter how burdened problems we have, it's still worth living. We have Christ with us. Give us that strength. Okay? We have a good family, good, strong families. Makes a good, strong church. Thank you for having good families. Every one of you here, we can all improve, but praise God for family day. Okay. Going to have a family preach. Come on. Up here. My young grandson. Good morning. I'm just checking to see if you woke up. All right. Good afternoon. Thanks for, for letting me speak again. Um, I have a question. Are you guys ready for answering questions? Pasensya, medyo paos ako. Because I was cheering so hard for Team Blue. Napapaos po ako. Pasensya na lang po. All right. Uh, how many of you participated in the afternoon festivities? Afternoon games, yes? Who did not participate? I'm so sorry. You missed out on so much fun. That's okay. There's next year pa. Habo na lang kayo. All right. Question time. Are you ready? No, you're not ready. All right. For at least those of you that are ready, let me ask a question. Since you belong to a family, how do you identify yourself as part of that family? What makes you obviously part of that family? Huh? Family name? Uh, what else? Black sheep? Black sheep? Black sheep? No. No. Uh, ano pa? Wal wala, yun lang. Either black sheep or same last name. Ano pa ba? By looks. I mean, look at me and my lolo. Pareho kami guapo, guapo. Right, Grandpa? We're both just incredibly good looking. Yeah, that, that's what my wife says. I'm good looking at least. Um, some of us are by our family line. Uh, some of us are tall. Tama? Some of us are not so tall. Right? Yes? No? Are we, are we agreeing to this? Yeah? I'm, j I'm trying to point out all of us inside of all of our families have identifying markers. Tama? Yung iba, yung buhok nila, kapag sila ay kasali sa isang pamilya, lahat sila kulot. Tama? Yung iba, lahat sila medyo hindi masyadong maputi. Tama? Parang antok pa yung iba. Right? Uh, and so because of that, we have identifying markers that help associate us to our family. And since it's family day today, I want us to discuss something very specific. That we belong not only to our physical family, but we belong to a bigger family also. We belong to a spiritual family. Is that right? We belong to the family of God. And that's what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about be, being part of the family of God. So if, if you have your Bible, please open it up. We want to look in the book of John chapter 1. John chapter 1. If you don't know where John is, just look at the partner next to you. I know. Just steal where they're looking in our Bible. John chapter 1. Starting in verse 12. John chapter 1, starting in verse 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Verse 13. Which were born, not of blood. Notice, if you're born into the family of God, you're not born physically into the family of God. All right, just in case you thought, you and I, we are not physical blood relatives because of our spiritual relationship. It says here, verse 13, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of man, uh, of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. When we are born into God's family, we are born of God. We are born spiritually into the family of God. How many of us in here belong to the family of God tonight? 
Yeah? If you belong to the family of God, go ahead and raise your hand. Yeah. If, you don't, if you're not sure about being part of God's family, guess what? At the end of this service today, I want to give you an opportunity to know how to become part of God's family. To be born again into the family of God. Okay lang po ba? Yes? No? Pagod pa yung iba. Yeah, we, we, spent all, we spent all our energy earlier. If we're born into the family of God, we belong to a spiritual family. And because of that, we have things that help identify us as family members inside of the family of God. Let's, let's point out several of them. First of all, we will act alike. Did you notice that? If you're born into the family of God, if you are a Christian, a believer, we begin to act alike. Napansin mo ba yan? There are certain things that all believers of Jesus Christ do. Turn with me to the book of Matthew chapter 22. Matthew chapter 22. And uh, inside of the notes, I have two verses for this, but we'll just read Matthew 22. Specifically, verse 37, 38, and 39. And this is Jesus Christ talking here. He says this. It says, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Have you heard that verse before? Yeah, it's kind of simple. We're supposed to love God. And see, if we belong to the family of God, we love differently. Right? We love differently because the love that we show in our lives is not just conditional love. It is an unconditional love. It says here, love God with all your heart, soul, and mind. All that we are, love God entirely. But then it goes on to a different aspect. The way that we treat others. Let's go to the next verse. It says, verse 38, this is the first and greatest commandment. And verse 39 says this, And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor, how? As thyself. Now wait a second. The way that we're supposed to love our neighbors, our physical next door neighbors, yung kapitbahay natin, our work neighbors, our seatmates, neighbors, we're supposed to love them like we love ourselves. We show love. We love the world differently. Tama po ba? We do. We do it differently. Why? Because we belong to God's family. We love because God first loved us. We love because Jesus Christ showed us His love. How did Jesus Christ show us His love? Yes. He took the payment, the punishment for your and my sin. Now, I, I, I realize some of you that are here regular, you might say, Alam mo, Pastor Corey and Pastor Boyd, pareho naman kayo. You always come back to that same discussion all of the time. But do you know what? That's what the whole Bible is talking about. It's talking about Jesus Christ who chose to come here to this earth, live a perfect life, and to take payment for someone else's sin. And the punishment of sin is death. So Jesus Christ died in payment for your and my sin. And I like to share that because it's a reminder to all of us, whether you are brand new here or if you are a believer and you've been faithful here for years, this is what our belief is about based on Jesus Christ, that He died, but He didn't just die. Jesus Christ rose again. And because of that, we can love differently. Inside of our spiritual family, we love differently. Another thing that makes us different is when we fight. Oh, wait, are, are we allowed to talk about fighting at church? Like, kanina, sa laro, Tinanong ko naman yung teams, meron po ba kayong kaaway? Sabi nila, yes! Kasi I mean, siyempre, we're, we're, we're competing on the teams. But in real life, do we have people that we disagree with? Okay, think about it right now. Have you disagreed with anybody in the last seven days? Yes, okay. Now identify, is that person 
an employer or an employee? Is that person a co-worker or a classmate? Is that person inside of your barangay? Is that person inside of your household? Ay, teka lang, Pastor Corey, wag, wag kang dumaan dyan. No, we get into disagreements from time to time. Tama? All of us do. If you don't get into disagreements, please talk to me later. I want to know your secret. All of us disagree from time to time. But just because we disagree does not mean that we have to fight dirty. Have you been around people that fight dirty? Do you know what I mean by fighting dirty? When you pull out all the stops, when every time you open your mouth, it sounds like a machine gun. Yeah? I don't think that's the way that we're supposed to be. As believers inside of God's family, we're supposed to fight differently. Turn back in your Bibles to the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 25. I'll give you a second to go there. Proverbs chapter 25. These verses here will guide us and give us guidelines of how we're supposed to disagree, how we're supposed to fight. And I think this is kind of humorous to find this in the Bible because oftentimes when we get into an argument, a disagreement, what we want to do is tear other people down. Tama? Why? Kasi sinaktan niya ako. But notice what it says here. Proverbs chapter 25, verse 21 and 22. It says this. If thine enemy, yung kaaway mo, yung kalaban mo, yung kontrabida mo. If your enemy be hungry, what does it say to do? Give him bread to eat. And if he be thirsty, I know. Give him water to drink. Now that certainly goes right along with the system of our world, right? If you have an argument or if you have an enemy, ano dapat gawin mo sa kanya? Sige, ikalat mo ng chismis tungkol sa kanya. Sige, i-tear down mo na lang siya. Sige, away mo siya sa harapan ng mga kapamilya niya. Tama po ba? Yan ang sinasabi ng mundo. Pero ang nakasulat dito po, kapag may kaaway po tayo, ano dapat gawin natin? Pakainin mo yan! So mga mister, mga mister, nasan po ba kayo? Nandyan ba kayo? Mga mister? When you fight with your missus, oh, let me rephrase this. When your missus fights you, when you have a disagreement with your spouse, Solution, pakainin mo yan. Mang Inasal, 109, kaya mo yan. Anli pa yan. Do it. Why? I, I, it's hard to understand why would you do this, but the, the secret is this. In order to stop the argument and to bring that enemy or that person that you're in conflict with, to turn them out of being an enemy and into a friend, share a meal with them. And the secret really is, stop fighting. Quit making them your enemy, but treat them as a friend. Because as friends, we like to treat each other to meals. Oy, alikid dito, kain muna tayo. Tama? Oh, kain, kain muna, alikid dito. Kahit wala ng ulam, sige, pakainin mo siya ng rice. Okay lang yan. Why? Because they're our friends, but how much more our enemies? And it's kind of funny, because if you do that to an enemy, or someone that's of this world, look what happens, verse 22. Nakakatawa naman. And I fi sometimes I find comedy in the Bible. Do you find comedy in the Bible? I found comedy in the Bible inside of this verse. Because if you have an enemy, pakainin mo siya, kung uhaw siya, painumin mo siya. And then verse 22 says this, For thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head, and the Lord will reward you. Wow. Magiging, magiging galit lalo yan. Bakit? Because they're expecting you to trade evil for evil. But instead, we're trading good for their evil. We fight differently. If we're in the body of Christ, we love differently. We love our neighbors like ourselves. If we're in the family of Christ, we fight differently. 
we return good for evil, right? Tama po ba? If we are not applying this in your life, this is something you should be applying because this helps identify us as a family. Okay? Good? There's another thing. We work differently. We work differently inside the world. We are different type of workers. Turn in your Bibles into the New Testament. Let me find it here. Colossians. Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3, verses 22 hanggang 24. Colossians is a small book in the New Testament. If you can't find it, just search it in Google. Lalabas po yan. Colossians chapter 3, verses 22 and 23 and 24. Let me read it to you. It says this, Servants, Obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord, and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the, re the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. Notice. When we're working here in this world, kahit anong trabaho mo, kahit anong ginagawa mo, kahit nag-aaral po tayo, or if we're working in the secular world, or if we're working in a boat, as a ship, if we're working abroad, if we're working locally, if we're working inside of a karinderia or, or call center, all of it is the same. Because we're supposed to be working as to the Lord. That means our work ethic needs to be in place. As believers in Jesus Christ, as part of the family of God, we need to have a good work ethic. How's our work ethic right now? Is it good? Are we representing our family well? Yes? No? I hope so. If not, it's time to do a check and start working hard. Not as to man, not because any pastor has said it. No, because God expects it from his family. Tama? Are you guys following with me? Yes? Yung iba na, nagtutulog na, okay lang. Tainga muna kayo. Yung iba nagising pa, mag-uusap pa tayo. Because I got something I want to share with you and this is good. Those are some identifying markers for our family. And I don't want to go long so I'll, I'll run right through these next several things. Inside of our families, Meron po ba tayong mga unspoken rules? Meron po ba? I think every family has unspoken rules. Unspoken rules inside of my family is you never, ever, ever touch the top of the head of my father. Kasi medyo kalbo yan. Nilalagay siya ng ano, uh, shining ointment something. Makintab yan. Huwag mong yang hawakan. Yung mga anak ko, they know never touch the top of his head. Why? And the kung disrespectful or what, but I know that that's, you never do that. I know also inside of my family, the unspoken rule is we always make asar. Do you guys have that rule inside of your family? Kailangan asarin mo yung isat isa, bawat isa. Tama po ba? All of us have unspoken rules. Some families, pagpasok mo sa bahay, tanggalin mo yung sapatos mo. It might be spoken or unspoken, but it's part of the family rules. I have a friend who they posted, they typewritten out their family rules and they posted it on the wall. Para mali now. Lahat ang rules. And I was expecting rules like, all right, all children in bed no later than 9 p.m. All assignments for school have to be finished bago mag television. Akala ko yan ang mga rules na lalabas dyan. Akala ko din. There would be other rules that. You know, kasi medyo healthy sila, no ice cream kapag midweek. Kapag Friday, pwede na, bahala na kayo. But no, know what I found? I found spiritual rules inside of their list. And I thought that was very interesting. Maybe we should have spiritual rules inside of our households. Inside of my house, we make it very clear. We make statements like this. In this household, we love each other. In this household, we are kind one to another. 
In this household, we wait before everyone is served bago tayong kumain. That's what we do inside of my household. But I found something that I think will apply to all of our households. And if you're the leader of your household, or if you're, you're, you're the neck of the household, di ba kanina may ulo, the husband, the wife is the neck, ibig sabihin leg po kayo. Ayos ha. Ano, ano pa ba yung mga bunsong anak? Daliring pa? pa parang pababayan. So let me share with you several rules that I found that I think apply to our lives. And these rules, I think, if we apply them well, they will affect change inside of our households. Do we want to have good house, home life? Do we want to have good relationships inside of our own homes? Yes. So let me share with you several. Rules for our family. Ephesians chapter 4. Actually, medyo, medyo nagulat ako kasi si Pastor Boyd kanina sabi niya, morning service, turn to Ephesians. Akala ko ninako niya yung verses ko. Ephesians chapter 4. Buti na lang hindi. Ephesians chapter 4. We're gonna start in verse 25. Rules for the family. For the household. Spiritual rules. Verse 25. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. The rule number one inside of our households should be this. Tell the truth. Right? Tell the truth. Yeah, Pastor Corey, that should be a given. Yes, unfortunately, we have to teach even the next generation that we should always tell the truth. It's hard sometimes to tell the truth, right? Husbands, when your wife asks you, do I look fat in this outfit? The truth is she looks beautiful. Tama. Wives, if your husband says, parang, parang numinipis na to. Ang sagot mo sa kanya, guwapo ka pa rin sa mata ko. That's still the truth. Don't tell them that they're actually kumakalbo ka na. Ako. Ang sakit yan eh. But what about when we have to tell the truth about things that are painful. As a child, I remember I broke a window in my father's house. Have you ever broke a window? And then, takot na takot ka pag uwi ni Papa kasi magagalit siya. Or maybe you were at the house and you broke a vase or a plate and nasira talaga. And kahit sinusubukan mo, pinapamayiti band yung gilid, hindi it's hard to tell your father or your mother, Ma, I broke this item. But as, ch as children, we need to teach them, it's okay to tell the truth. But sometimes the truth will take consequences. Did you notice that? Sometimes it, it has consequences. The truth does have consequences, but we also know as believers that the truth will set us free. Right? Because if we choose to hide it and lie, it begins to plant some darkness inside of our hearts. And we don't need that in our lives. Number one, tell the truth. Okay? Second thing that should be highlighted in all of our families, a rule for our family is this. Verse 26, be ye angry and sin not. Not, let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Verse 27, neither give place to the devil. Kanina, binigit ko naman lahat tayo na ay nagagalit minsan. I would pray that all of us would deal with our anger, with self-control. So, first we need to tell the truth, but second, we need to fight fair. We need to fight fairly. That means don't take any cheap shots. Sa boxing, di ba, may mga bawal na moves. Tama? Bawal magsipa. Bawal mag low blows. Tama? Inside of our arguments, when we get angry, it says be angry and sin not. Did you know that Jesus Christ himself also became angry? Several times. But he didn't sin. 
He didn't let go of any low blows. He didn't do in any illegal punches. He chose to fight fair and deal with the problem. And I challenge you, I encourage you, just like this verse says, deal with the problem ASAP. Don't let the sun go down. Kasi kung hindi natin aayusin yung problema na yan, yung, yung issue na yan, kung hindi natin harapin yung conflict na yan, we will plant the seeds of contempt for one another inside of our hearts. And it's like a cancer that begins to grow. So, rules for our family. We should tell the truth. We should fight fair. We should work hard. Verse 28, let him that stole, steal no more. But rather, let him labor, working with his hands, the thing which is good that he may have to give to him that needeth. We need to work hard. We should work hard inside of our homes, work hard in our studies, work hard in our jobs. Why? Because when we work hard, we have the liberty to be generous to others. Last week, we spoke a little bit about generosity and finances and giving. When we give, it's beneficial to us. So when we work hard, there's an automatic byproduct. So let's tell the truth. Let's fight fair. Let's work hard. And then next is this, verse 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. We need to encourage one another. That's what we need to do. We need to encourage one another. Some of us like to have people do things for us. But we also need to encourage one another. We need to encourage our spouse, our husband, our wife, our mother, our father, our children. Lift them up with our words. Don't say, ay, o nga, palpak ka na naman sa exam mo, no? Tama. Kasi hindi ka kasi talino ng kapatid mo. Ang sakit, no? What's better is, alam mo, it looks like you're having a hard time. Can I help you? Tutulungan naman kita. Sa misis mo, mahal, I love you. How can I help you? Husband, wow. Thank you for working hard for our family. Those simple words mean a lot. They go a long way. Let's encourage one another. Rules for this family, our spiritual family goes into verse 30. And grieve not the Spirit, uh, the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let's do what's right. Because when we choose to do what's wrong, we grieve the Spirit of God. We go against what God wants us to do. God wants us to do good. God wants us to bless others. God wants us to think good thoughts to others, to have good actions to others, to speak good words to others, including our immediate family. Yes? If that's the case, we should do what's right. Sometimes we get faced with the problem. Do I do what's right or do I do, or do, I, do what I want to do? Dapat piliin natin yung right. Kesa kung ano gusto natin. Rules for our homes. Tell the truth. Fight fair. Work hard. Encourage one another. Do what's right. I like this next one, verse 31. It says, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. That means get rid of all of that junk. I like to put it simply. Don't be grouchy. Eh, naging uso yung bagong salita. Don't be hangry. Hungry and angry. Pinagsama, hangry. Don't be grouchy. Don't choose to let all of these things pour out of your mouth because nababad trip ka. Don't let these things pour out of your mouth because you had a hard day at work. Don't let bad things come out of our hearts and our mouths because we had a fight with someone else. 
No. Let's choose to not be grouchy. Ano ba ang grouchy sa Tagalog? Hmm? Pikon? Ha? Ano? Hindi nyo alam. Pati kayo, hindi nyo alam, ha? Masungit? Bad trip? Sumpungin? Ay, ala, sa good word. Sumpungin. Mga kaibigan, mga kapatid, sa ating mga pamilya, let us choose to not be grouchy. Okay? Kung napansin mo, I like things kind of short and sweet. Katulad ng misis ko, short and sweet siya. Maliit lang siya, tapos sweet talaga sa akin. Don't be grouchy. And then this last one, I think this is a crucial one. And this is one of the most important ones. Rules that we should have inside of our homes. Verse 32. And be ye kind one to another. Tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Simple. Be kind and forgive. Be kind and forgive. Sometimes it's hard to forgive. No? Lalo kapag nasaktan ka. But when that person comes to you in remorse and they repent from that action and they say, I am genuinely sorry, I don't want to do that again, please forgive me, we should forgive. We should choose to forgive. We should choose to be kind and tender-hearted and loving. We should make the statement from today, today in my house, in your house, in our homes, we will choose to be kind and to forgive. Napaka simple naman yung topic natin ngayon. Rules for our home, rules for our family. My challenge for you is this. I have two. First of all, can you do a self-evaluation? Do you look like that you are part of God's family? Do a self-evaluation right now. Kanina, binanggit ko three things that make us look at least set us apart as part of God's family that we love differently and that we fight differently and that we work differently. Is it true inside of my life? Yes or no? And I can't answer that for you. Nobody else can answer that except you. Is it true for my life? If the answer is no, sometimes, or yes, for each one of those things. If the answer is not yes for each and every one of those three, I think we should commit to God tonight to choose to look, to live, to abide in God's family like a member of His. Okay? That's the first thing. No, second thing is this. If you're not part of God's family, I want to invite you to be part of God's family tonight. All you have to do is accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. We have counselors, we have leaders that would like to share with you on how to ha start to be part of God's family, to be born again. And in the invitation, I would ask you to come. And then this is the last one. Would you be willing, like me, to apply these rules for your family? Would you be willing to do that? That means from here forward that we will choose to have spiritual guidelines for our family. Are you willing to do that? Yes or no? Some of you are like, oh, sure, I'll say yes para makauwi ako. Sige. That's fine. Let's bow our heads. Let's close our eyes.